you know, people say, well, what do you do? And I say, well, we're in the transformation business. Did you know that 96% of dentists are not financially able to retire at age 65? And according to the American Dental Association, the average dentist retires at 69, which is four years longer than the average retirement age for dentists in 2001, and eight years later than the average American. Why? It's because they're overworked and underpaid. And over the last 20 years, dentist income has remained flat or declined. Now, what if you could find a system that took five minutes to set up and could automatically find the top places where dentists and dental organizations are leaving money on the table and train your teams to find that money, get the money, and keep the money in a systematic way, both ethically and responsibly? Meet Gary Cady. Since 1996, he's built systems, tools, and training for general dentists who hate staring at P&L statements, QuickBooks, financial systems, and managing a team that they generally don't understand so that they can focus on what they're great at and love to do. He's helped over 6,000 practice owners start, build, and grow and scale their practices, many of whom double or even triple their revenue shortly after working with them, all with less share side hours. They work on their businesses rather than in their business and often go from working six days a week to three and a half or even less. Today, he's going to share a unique five-step system that helps any general practitioner, rural or city, big or small, find money hidden in plain sight. And as he likes to say, it's about finding the money, getting the money and keeping the money ethically and responsibly. Even if you're not a dentist or don't work in the dental world, stay tuned and pay attention because Gary's case studies and stories are something that every business owner should model. So Gary, so nice for you to be here with me today, my friend. Thanks, Mike. Glad to be here. All right. So let's begin with um, you've developed a system that works during pandemics, up years and down years, and independent from what's going on in the economy, personal breakdowns, divorces, associates leaving, team members leaving, pestilence, I'd like to add that. How did you get into this business? Why don't you give us a little bit of a backstory on you and why you've been in it for 24 years? Uh, you bet, Mike. Well, I, it, it all came from a failure, like every other entrepreneurial opportunity. Uh, I was in the direct marketing business back in the 90s and in San Diego, and I was bringing patients to the front door of dental practices, and they were going out the back door. And when they were there, they didn't want to be there. And not only that, the dental teams didn't want to be there. And even the doctor so many times didn't want to be there because he or she was signed up for something that they never really signed up for. And they had to do this business monster of, a, of, a, of a, you know, running a business and didn't know how to do that. So um, facing bankruptcy on my, my own because I took on printing and graphics and I, I failed at that business after a while because it grew bigger than me and I didn't know how to scale a business. I didn't know the infrastructure of a business. I was just really good at my, what I was good at, which was listening to people, listening to what they want, helping them get more of what they want, less of what they don't. And what happened was, um, and there was a day where I, I was really distraught. I was on the beach in Coronado and, uh, you know, just sitting there by myself and I was walking off and, and all of a sudden I saw this older gentleman coming up to me and he said, son, are you okay? And he said, and I said, no, I said, uh, it's just like, he's, you, what are you worried about? And I said, I'm worried about money. He said, um, with that purpose and that reason for living, you're only going to get so far. And so, you know, this guy became my coach and Roger taught me uh, two primary distinctions that we bring into business that I didn't have. And no matter how good I was at the um, infrastructure or the strategy or any of it, two things are a must in, in business that I learned. First, integrity. Second, purpose. And I learned integrity the hard way through him where he said, he said, look, you know, you're doing well. I, I, he got me back on my feet. I didn't go bankrupt. Um, he said, paying your $800,000 that you owe back is going to teach you so many lessons. And he said, you know, I want to give you a short-term lesson. And that is, do you know you're late for every meeting we have? I go, Roger, you're, you're just messing with me. What do you mean late? And he said, well, let's bring some tangibility to it. $100 for every minute you're late. And Mike, he tracked it at the end of the month. He said, 
hey, we need to reconcile. You were 36 minutes late this month. And I, and he said, you owe me $3,600. I said- 3600 bucks you didn't have. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, no, not only did I not have 3600 I was $800,000 in debt. Yeah. And so long story short, I paid Roger. I got the lesson um, and paid the entire $800,000 back. And really, uh, it allowed me uh, to build what we're about to talk about today, about how to build a dental practice, how to build a business in general, um, and some of the some of the steps to get there. Well, I know in just preparing for this interview, first of all, you've got amazing case studies, and also um, you've got a lot of people who love you simply because you've been giving them the freedom they've been looking for. I think in the intro we talked about the fact that you know dentists don't want to look at their PLs; they don't want to be looking at uh, QuickBooks. They want to do what they do, and unfortunately, they have to run a business at the same time, which is yeah. getting getting more complicated and less profitable. So what you're really great at is specializing. So why don't we talk a little bit about um, how you got into the business and how Next Level Practice was born and how that evolved into the the products, the services, and everything else that you're offering today. Well, in, in, in the 90s, I saw the internet coming, so I knew direct mail would be um, antiquated. So I really had this affinity to dentists and dental teams, and I really got to see and I got to know them. I found myself hanging out in dental practices and what I saw was that, you know, they were, dentists were thinking that new patients was their lifeline. It was like their only way to grow their practice. And there was this whole world that once, if they open their eyes to, um, they can get their team on board, they can get their patients on board, and they can look at a different way of growing their practice and really automating a lot of the things that they're just so frustrated about that they don't want to have to deal with. Um, and, you know, what was happening was uh, so often team members come in the front door and go out the back. Patients go out, come in the front door and go out the back. And so one of the things that we wanted to do was really, I, I saw that I could really help dentists put in a business model because that's the other thing, Mike, the business model that they were deploying, really relying on new patients as the primary way of growing their business was really antiquated. And there was no conversion system. There was no way to find the money and run analytics and, and get the money and, and then keep it. So they had, you know, some of them were doing well, but the money was coming in the front door and it was going out the back. And these were all basic fundamental business principles that were not existing inside of a, uh, a uh, in, in, not fitting inside of a dental practice. And so I knew I can cut the corner. Um, I can help them build teams dedicated to a common purpose. I can give them the three ways to build the practice, not just one way and exponentially grow it. I can help them give security and, and accuracy to their numbers and remove embezzlement as an issue. Um, remove all the frustrations that a dental practice, a dentist needs. Because in dental school, Mike, they were not trained to be business owners, but really they are entrepreneurs and they they just don't know how to do it. So we simplified the way of, of building a dental practice. And what we did was we just, we you know, 99% of them are micromanagers because they're trying to control the situation like octopus. And or octopi. Is it octopi? Octopus? I'm not sure, Mike. I'm not sure either. Or... Actually, I was just reading that not long ago. <laughs> it, it popped in, but let's just call them octopi. The octopi, right? Yeah. So they have, they're running around like octopi and micromanager eye. We'll go with that. Micromanagers, like, you know, really having right, their attention right. on every little detail and then simultaneously being non confrontational and avoiders. And so, I, it's just like the makeup of the persona in round dentistry. And, you know, it's been so much fun to uh, help them move, you know, allow them to be who they are and set their business up so that they can do two things, be themselves and do what they love to do, which is dentistry. And so that being said, that's really what my whole job has been uh, over the last 24 years is clean up the mess, put in the structure let them do things that they want to do, have fun doing it, get the team on board. And it's a game changer. You know, it's two months of implementation and customization, 10 months of training, and we have a three-year curriculum, but these doctors come in, takes eight weeks to set up, 10 months to train. And then if they want to go to advanced courses, they can do that up to three years of curriculum. It's a game changer. And it's really transformed how uh, dentists really do business. It's really been really rewarding and fun. Well, I know in getting prepared, I got to um, look at a lot of data um, from your past 
dental organizations that have been working with you, many of them for a long time because they get something at all the, all the time. Most recently met Jonathan from New York City who just loves you. And he's excited because uh, what he specifically said to me is he believes you with, with you and your organization, he's going to double the size of his practice in a year. And that was in an independent conversation I had. So what I um, have learned so far about you, you've spent 24 years evolving and building the system. Over 20,000 dental practice owners have gone in uh, and through it. You've uh, increased their collections over a billion dollars. They've treated over 30 million patients. And um, along the way, they've reduced their the days that they work. They take more vacation weeks per year. And some of the people who love you most are couples who are working with you. And you've got a great story of John and Natasha. And they're a pretty ideal organization. So why don't you share... Um, how you help them grow their practice and what those circumstances are. Because again, I think for any business owner, they should model the way you storytell. And the other thing is when they see the love and the caring that goes into the business and also what you've built here, they'll see the humanity, the connection that you create along the way. So can you tell us a little bit about John and Natasha? Yeah, well, I, you know, this one warms, they all warm my heart. I, you know, you know, people say, well, what do you do? And I say, well, we're in the transformation business. You know, people say, well, you do coaching, consulting, training, and that's the act of what we do. But really, the story of Josh and Natasha is just so amazing. And that uh, think of New London, Ohio. Um, it's a tiny town of 2,500 people. There's one street light in the center of town. There's still the telephone company that has kind of boards on it and, and it still exists there with the boards on it, you know, the days of the telephone companies. And um, it was just amazing. I, I had the privilege of going to New London. But when you think about it as a business owner, 2,500 people living in this town, you're, there's you and another dentist. And, you know, this doctor, Josh, was, uh, he told me his story before he met me and it just really just blew me away that he was actually ready to hang his loops up and end what he was doing. He, uh, I had a, a, a workshop, uh, his CPA hired me to speak to all of his dentists. He's a dental specific CPA in Columbus, Ohio. So Josh drove an hour and a half down and uh, upon leaving in his, you know, pickup truck that he, that he drove down in, he said he remembered like walking out and he got a letter from a, a dental service organization of looking to buy his practice. And he was just ready to just say, that's it. Let me just sell this thing and get out. And he's a young man, as you can see here, he and his wife, and they're pregnant here. And now they have the two boys. Um, and we met that night. Here's a picture of that night. And, uh, you know, just amazing human beings. And they care deeply about their community. He's driving down. He's going, I, I, I just want to give this up. He goes, I just hate doing what I'm doing because the business collapsed really what his love was, which is to do great dentistry. He's a great clinician, a great healthcare practitioner. And so Mike, he was ready to give it all up. So he drove down, he, his wife didn't come, sat there and he listened to me. And, you know, I started bringing um, some awarenesses to him about what, our, what we call our care system, case acceptance, retention, and the experience and acquisition of new patients. The three ways to build the practice. Josh was in the old model of drill, fill and bill, and just new patient acquisitions. You can't get more new patients in the 2,500. He was maxed out. So as you'll see, um, as we walk through his story, which is really, really amazing, he was so underperforming. If you look here in 2017 of July, he had 449 visits in, in the entire month, and he was producing 77,000. Now, once we began to show him that, yes, you have a finite amount of people, and by the way, he started attracting more Mike because of the way he differentiated himself and the experience he was offering his patients. They come from far and wide now. So he has a bigger pool of 2,500. But he also, if you look at the after here, he now sees 728. This is July of 2020, post-pandemic, Mike. 728 in terms of visits, no more hours. He's actually working less hours. And look at the production of 167. So one of the things that Josh learned was uncollapsing time and money. It's what you put into the time. And if you don't block your time out, you end up just working harder and more. And most dentists think they need to work harder and more hours to make more. And that's the myth. We break that myth 
and we get them much more efficient because here's where the turning point is for Josh. He saw that he was presenting 81,000. You'll see this in July of 2017, presenting 81,000, getting 51,000 accepted. Now look at 2020 July, presents 221, gets 121. And so people are trusting him, accepting him. And that's the missing for most dental practices. How do you get the patient to understand what the problem is and how to solve it? And that's what, that's what Josh did. And once he learned that, then he looked at how does he keep the money? How does he keep his practice thriving? Well, you look at the retention of patients. And you can see here, he was at 77. And just look at this, Mike, 91% retention of patients. Game changing. And so Josh was going to hang his loops up. Now he's thriving. And here's what's really cool about the story, which this is really the product that I, this is what I stand for. It's about living a full life for dentists, their teams, their teams, their families, their patients. Everybody wins. We call it the triple win. But look at what Josh has. Josh has a new building. Here's the funny story about Josh, Mike. He told me, he said, when you come up, I'm a little embarrassed about my building because if you threw wheels on it, it would be a double wide. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was so funny. Not anymore, though. No, he's bought this building next to the his center of town. And the other thing, Josh, um, one of my second book is called Raise Your Healthy Deserve Level because what happens for practitioners, because they mostly come from humble beginnings, once they get very successful, they normally self-sabotage. This is where our three-year curriculum comes, comes in. Josh did not sabotage. And guess what? He can now drive his dream car through the center of town, not arrogantly, but humbly because he knows he's making a profound difference. And that building is his new dental practice. The old building, listen to this, Natasha, his wife, is turning that into an all-access dental and medical facility for underprivileged people to get their care. So. They are, they are taking on transforming the greater New London area in Ohio. And to me, this is one of the greatest gifts of allowing me to guide this, this couple and transform an entire community. Really a great story. And it's about uh, giving back. It's really a mindset shift. That's something I've learned in studying your materials, meeting your team and preparing for this interview is you have a very, very holistic way of thinking that changes the their entire approach to thinking about their business in the first place. So I think it's fair to say that um, this approach you're taking really would work for any professional services business. It's not just dentistry, even though that's what you happen to focus on. Yeah, well, Mike, I mean, I've, I got my start in, I did attorneys, I did CPAs, I did MDs and I did dentists when I first started out. I, I just love professional services firms. And it's so funny uh, in working with attorneys, they would argue with me when I made a recommendation. CPAs would um, do a spreadsheet on every decision and MDs were really, really, um, they were just uh, imprisoned into the bureaucracy of insurance. And so I sold off those divisions and really focused in on dentistry. But Absolutely. This can be, I, you know, people that read my book, Million Dollar Dentistry are optometrists, um, uh, accountants, uh, you know, plastic surgeons, uh, optometry, all, all different types, functional medicine, all different types of healthcare and general business uh, pr professional services firms. So it's all applicable, the same philosophies. Right. And, and the small minded thinking of there's no more expansion in my town or even during a pandemic, you've proven that the system consistently works or you wouldn't have made it this far. So you've got another area of focus that produces more financial freedom, more time off, higher income and revenue. And that's with another uh, transformational story with Donna Williams. Why don't you talk about what she's done with her practice? Uh, man, you're, you're giving me chills as I, I hear her name. Uh, Donna is uh, a, an amazing practitioner here. Uh, she's in Harlem, New York. Uh, just north of here. And she is, you know, a mom and, and her husband is a psychologist at, at Columbia Siddiqui. I know, you know, I know our, I know all the families of people that we work with because I, I really like seeing the transformation. And uh, for me, uh, Donna Williams is a hero um, on many levels because, um, you know, in all over the years, in 24 years and 6,000 practices, um, I had a turning point in my career. And 
it was when my dad had a heart attack and tonight I'm going to see him for his birthday and I'm going to celebrate him big time. You know, he made it through a heart attack, has eight stents. Um, wow. And I was really good at implementing my, my expertise is in creating happy teams that implement sustainable results. The two things that dentists really want, happy teams, sustainable results. And um, I went into a hygiene uh, uh, department meeting and I shared with them that my dad had a heart attack and the hygienist goes, did, how's your dad? How was your dad's periodontal condition? I'm like, my dad had a heart attack. And I was in dentistry for about 10 years before I discovered, made this discovery. Mike, it, she, she brought to my attention this whole science about oral systemic connection and the mouth connected to the body. And, you know, when you have inflammation and bacteria in the, in the mouth, it travels through the blood system and into the organs and, and affects the overall health of an individual, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, dementia, all those elements. And I didn't know that, but I, this was the turning point in my career where this is where the missing element of converting asymptomatic care for dentists came into vogue because this is the biggest problem. Most dentists are trained to find the chief complaint and fix it. Here's the opportunity. They were then asking the patient, what's bringing you in today? What's hurting you? What's bothering you? And in the basic sales philosophy, if you're asking them what the problem is and they say that they have no problem, you're not going to have any treatment recommended and accepted. And so this is where complete health dentistry was born. And it's basically a very simple system that I built that educates the patient from their whole body health, step-by-step -step system. And Donna Williams was one of the first to Im uh, implement this. And one of the things that she was looking for when she came for me, she's a first generation immigrant. She was really looking to take two months off out of the year because she wanted to go back to Tanzania where her family was from, they have roots, to bring a dental uh, school and a whole hospital and build a hospital there. Well, she was like, there's no possible way that I can do that. Like, I can't just take off my business, it'll just fall apart. And we see this with most dentists, like they think they can't take time off. And so I said, Donna, we can design this. So I created the complete health model where we reverse engineer how much you wanna make, how much time you want to give to it, and then we figure out how much you have to do per day per person. And that turns your payroll into a profit center. Well, we did just that. And look what happened here. Well, first of all, I have to share. Um, she now is, um, we have this book here called, uh, uh, you know, is, is a complete health book where doctors get uh, edified by um, writing a book and they, it takes them an hour to do this book. And now all of a sudden they become elevated as a complete health practitioner. And all that means for those of you, you don't have to go back to medical school. It's a simple systematic format about reading a medical history form and just educating the patient in a brand new way. Not saying, is anything hurting, anything bothering you, but really saying, here's what's healthy. Let's see how you're doing. And then creating a gap between what he what's healthy and what's not. And when you do that, what happens is you increase your practice dramatically. So you'll see here, she was at, um, in, in, uh, um, so in 2017, she was at 72,000 in production. You'll see that she goes to 145. Um, how did she get there? Well, she wasn't converting her new patients into long-term patients. And you can see here in the conversions, she had 18% of her patients coming in the front door, staying in the back. So they, were, they were just not coming. And then we ramped it up now to 46% and then 71% case acceptance. The other opportunity here was that they were coming in the front door, Mike, and they were going out the back again. Mm -hmm. You went from 50 to 73, Mike. Now, all of a sudden, guess what? When she put all these systems and processes in, got her team on board, measured all this, she took two months off and she built a, a total healthcare facility, dental school. They're being trained on complete health. This is one of my favorite texts that she sent me. This is the... Um, they are the movie that is let's work together to improve healthcare. And they watched it in, uh, in Africa, the documentary that I filmed, it was just extraordinary. So, um, this was one of my favorite stories about making an impact, not just here in Donna Williams in Harlem and taking off two months and having her biggest year yet. She also went away and set up a whole hospital and dental school in, uh, in Tanzania. So it just goes to show how many ways you can give back when you've got systems and tools and processes in place that 
work for you. This is not about the doctor having to do the work. It's about empowering the teams and giving them the resources and the knowledge and also the documentation. And you've walked me through um, your tools too. I mean, it's a really easy, comprehensive system. So I've been blown away so far. So that's really, really good. Um, and let's talk a little bit about um, Jeremy, because he's another great transformational story. Well, Jeremy, uh, like you'll see here, he and his wife and his family, just an amazing provider. You know, there's just some rock stars that just like they play at a 10. They're A players. They're like, you know, D1 athletes. They're just like they find the best. They play the best. They just have that one mindset. You had mentioned Jonathan B. Levine. You know, he's a disciple of the whole Rosenthal movement and in the early days of cosmetic dentistry. Jeremy, too. These are like the top, top, top one percenters. And Jeremy's just one of them. And you can see here, he did a, a, a book as well and elevated his game by having that. Um, you know, his family here as well. But here's the thing, you know, Jeremy was like me, like back in the day, like party fresh, you know, it's like, you know, he'd go to a dental, dental, you know, event and he'd be out like late and waking up or, you know, coming in late to the workshop and his team's there mad at him. He's not there, but he's like, you know, he gets stuff done and he has fun. He's amazing. I mean, he is amazing and a great father and a great husband. Um, and he and I share, uh, his son was diagnosed with sensory processing disorder as was mine. Um, so he called me and he said, look, you know, I'm at the top of my game, but I can't, this is not sustainable. You know, he's doing big, big numbers. Um, you know, we're talking like 70,000 a day. Like he's doing implants. He's doing, you know, he's, he's running a top, uh, practice, you know, right in, uh, the Bay area, you know, he, he, all the executives from LinkedIn, Apple, Microsoft, Uber, like that's who, this is who they go to. And, right, you know, right. he has a fee schedule, fee schedule to match. He's an amazing guy. Right. But and, he doesn't uh, have a sustainable practice because he's grinding himself nonstop. And there's only so far you can go without the right support tools and systems. Well, he knew that. And, you know, you're, we're all gifted as entrepreneurs um, circumstances. And he had he, he knew that he could not continue to burn the candle at both ends and be there for his wife and be there for his son like it was for me. I'm 10 years his senior. And so he knew that I did it for myself and, and exploded our business and took care of my son. By the way, my son's off the spectrum and he's in, in the midst of it now because now he has the time and energy to take care of his wife and his son. Right. And, right. and but still have a top, top, top performing practice. Well, how did he do that? Um, you know, uh, he, he, he's more of he was like the Geppetto of dentistry where he was like pulling the strings and like if he if he wasn't pulling the strings, nothing happened. And then he also had like what I call um, team members who were rogue like he was where, you know, they would be running with scissors with flip flops on like, you know, just rogue people. Well, what what happened was to decentralize his team, he needed people that were more methodical and would follow a systematic process for high performers like this. They get bored of that. They don't they don't want the boring. They want the high the, the high drama, high chaos. And so I taught him how to bring, how to hand off to his team leader DM and put in the structure for his team. And what happened was um, he can then got freed up. And, um, and what happened was now all of a sudden he's, he's, he has the structure to go in and he doesn't have to micromanage everybody. DM's actually doing that. And so what happened was, and I'll show you some numbers here that I think are pretty, pretty profound. I mean, here's a guy that was doing, you know, I would say, you know, he's in the 200s, 296 here in 2017. Let's just look at it. Post pandemic, 2020, 566. And so, you know, doubling a practice. Yes. How does he do that? He's looking at, you know, he wasn't even looking at hygiene case acceptance. It was like zeros in 2017. And you can see now all of a sudden we're start, he started to track measures that were upstream, Mike. So when you look at upstream numbers, that's your input numbers, not lagging numbers like your bank account production and collection. This gave him the peace of mind. He's like, a, he's like me. I'm a control freak. I want to be able to know that I'm controlling it. But see how you become the ultimate person in control without being a freak is look at input numbers that allow you to know downstream in dentistry seven months later how your production, collection, and bank account is going to be. And you know he's a periodontist, so he was only retaining 29% because he's a great periodontist. He sends patients back to the GPs that refer to him. Half his practice is direct to him. 
So we got it to almost what would be the equivalent in a GP practice at 100%. This is unheard of in today's world. And uh, so by retaining his patients, he was able to have freedom. And now he can measure, monitor on a smartphone and DM controls everything. Now he goes in, does his dentistry, goes home at the end of the day and is home for his son and his wife. And uh, he's living um, a big full life and having his practice run without him having to force things. Really, really impressive. And again, just looking at the numbers that you shared, um, you know, this is, these are consistent patterns. And in all of the uh, research that I did to get us to this point right now, this is, this is very consistent behavior and very consistent results too. It's really, really impressive. So um, why don't you talk a little bit about the number one thing that you believe GP should be doing right now after looking at this and doing this for 24 years, what is it that separates the winners from the losers, the most productive, if you were going to summarize this and share it on like a one sheet? Yeah, I, I, I think especially post pandemic, the new patient, the new consumer is all about health. I would turn my practice from a drill, fill and bill PPO mill into a complete health practice. It's really where you're educating on what's healthy and what's not and looking focus more than just the new patient acquisition but the average annual value of your patient and when you look at two visits in hygiene the value of a crown to build up that average annual value should be somewhere around 1300 for a ppo if you have ppo fees and then multiply that times how many patients you have and all of a sudden you have a different equation that you're going to operate your business from you're going to focus on getting the cases closed, retaining the patients inside your practice so that when the new ones come in, you actually expand. You don't just send them out the back and have them come in the front and stay stagnant there. And then the last thing is, is really um, have a business chassis, a business model where you have data points that are actually giving you the information. See, these data points tell the story and the behavior of your team. And when you have that, you have full control. And Turn your payroll into a profit center by putting measures on each team member so that they know what their outcome is every day. They know what's expected of them and then really have a training system that supports them. Very simple. And in today's world, you can have complete step by step short videos that train your team and they get it fast. And then there's, you know, brush ups on how they can fix that and then really have an accountability coach, have someone who understands all this keeps your eye on the ball because it's so easy to get distracted, especially like Jeremy, if you have something going on personally or you just get bored in your practice. The biggest thing is I see Mike, and I think you would attest to this, the problem with successful people, and we work with a lot of successful people, they take their eye off the ball when they're successful and then things start falling apart. And then before you know it, you don't know, you know what happened. So this is the way you find the money, you get the money and then you keep it using this systematic process that I'm recommending here. Really good. And now one of the things that we talked about before doing this interview was putting together some giveaways and some resources for our viewers so they could get a taste for your system. So there's a demonstration. There's also um, some books and some other tools as well that at least get anyone with any kind of a practice, whether it's dental or otherwise, you can model this in your own business. What are some of those tools and where should they go to get them? Yeah, we, we created a money in plain sight uh, toolkit for, for the listeners at Entrepreneur. And, uh, and it's really, they can get it at nextlevelpractice.com uh, forward slash free. Uh, and you're going to get my million dollar dentistry book. I, I wrote it in, in Hoboken, New Jersey, and now it's hundreds of thousands in distribution, 37 countries. It blew my mind that it just went viral and it's read by all different types of practitioners. So great book. I read it before we met. Yep. Yeah. And uh, you told me, you said the first story really hooked you in, which is the day in the life of Larry Laser Guy, which is a, a, a compilation, a story of, of everything that dentists really uh, grapple with. And then the chapters after that really talk about the solutions, the nine chapters after that. And then, you know, getting your team motivated, getting these measures in place, a free morning huddle motivator worksheet. And the worksheet allows you to figure out and uncollapse time and money. And it's a real simple tool to fill out every day. And then you just, you're, you have a real focus for the day. And then uh, the morning huddle motivator, I write these every day. And I, I'll tell you, whenever I go to a dental trade show, Mike, it's really cool because they, 
They said, Gary, I get your huddle every day. Thank you. You've, you've changed my life. I know you don't know that, but I had some bad days and you sent me the right message at the right time and it changed everything. And, you know, that that really moves me. So imagine every day getting uh, a message uh, of, of hope, possibility, transformation each day and you'll get that. And then um, I over the pandemic, we, we opened 1800 practices, closed them at pandemic and then reopened them. But I also found time to write a 60 page book which is really the next edition of uh, Million Dollar Dentistry called Bounce Back from Anything. I really wanted to put the base fundamentals that we talked about in this interview, plus some step-by-steps to get in on the backside of any crisis, whatever it might be. I I went through 9-11, I went through 2008, and went through the pandemic. So I'm an accidental expert, and I put it in a 60-page book called Bounce Back from Anything, and that's part of the free free, uh, bundle as well. Great tools, great tools. I've looked through them. They're fantastic, well-written. And like I said, I think they're applicable to any, anyone in any business, but especially the BPs that, uh, or the GPs you're working with. So, um, Gary, anything else that you'd like to end with before we finish this interview today? Well, I, you know, I, I, my favorite quote is never doubt that a small group of committed citizens could ever change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. So wherever you're starting from, if you're at the top of the mountain and you want to go to the next one, or if you're at base camp and you want to climb again, um, you just take the first step and, and, uh, hope I have the chance and privilege to connect with you. All right. Well, thank you, Gary. And then for you watching, um, make sure you head on over to nextlevelpractice.com slash free. That's where Gary is set up and his team put together all the tools that you can download n- totally free, no obligation, but also learn more about this system and this tool and where all the data is coming from. So you can see how Um, His system is really, really easy to plug into any organization and see the results. You can get or find the money, get the money, keep the money. So, Gary, thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate this. Thanks, Mike.